one thing I do want to speak to right now would be the Aquarium Trade and Trafficking Bill. It's bill, uh, Senate Bill 1240. Um, that is currently on the governor's desk, uh, slated. It's on the list of vetoing. Um, so I want to encourage everyone, you can go on our Facebook and see it, or Kai Palawa Facebook, my Facebook, Kealoha Pishoda Facebook, and you can see the post. Please call the governor and let your, or email him and, and let them know. So basically, let me tell you a little bit about the bill. We've been trying to get the aquarium trade and trafficking um, uh, of aquarium fish um, for a long time. And what people need to think is that aquarium fish are actually our wildlife. So imagine if we just went out and we collected our wildlife birds, including the endangered birds, and we're allowed to just cage them up and ship them off to somewhere on the mainland for someone's entertainment. The, the reef fish that are commonly caught are very important to the whole ecosystem. So they're the herbivores, and they're the herbivores that they eat the limu, okay? And the, when they eat the limu, then they grow big and fat, and then it feeds the pelagic fish that we also uh, eat, yeah? So um, it's, it's, it's the basic part of the whole reef ecosystem are these little fish. And so we're, we, we've worked for years to just get an outright ban because it's just not sustainable. You can't just keep, you know, the, the aquarium fishers can just go right out and collect as many as they want for as long as they want and there's no limit. And that's what we've been telling the state uh, BLNR and DLNR, Department of Land and Natural Resource, that there's, there's no sustainable limit here. And they're actually, they don't even have, the state does not even have a definition of sustainable when it comes to aquarium collection. So I think that's outrageous to imagine that you can just have, you know, a set of people with these permits to go out there and just take them and harvest 24 seven. And you know, what I wanna say is, there's a lot of talk about the science, okay? Um, there, there, there isn't enough science on one side, they say, and there's too much science on the other side. But here's the bottom line. All you need to do is put on a mask and snorkel and go outside and see, and you, you even young people can tell that the reef, the nearshore reef fishery is declining. And uh, there's another aspect to it that a lot of people don't always think of or hear, and that is that those, many of those reef fish are amakua, so they're family to different families. For example, the puffer fish, the o'opuhui, things like that, those are amakua. And so when we're just taking, and they take more than fish, they take eels, they take baby sharks, they take octopus, yeah? All of these kinds of things, and hermit crabs, millions of hermit crabs are taken and shipped out. And so these, these are the resources that belong to not only us, but our children, the future generation. So, so we're really asking simply for the state to pass Senate Bill 1240, which is a compromise bill actually, because it has, it basically allows the fishers who currently, they're not really fishers, let me get that straight, because the collectors, because they're not fishing, they're collecting. Okay, that's different. Uh, we, we support Pono fishing, um, but they're, they're not going to issue any new permits, so they'll allow the guys who have the permits now to stay and continue to do, and hopefully the bill also includes DLNR having to develop um, some kind of plan on what is sustainable. So to come up with these numbers, and they, they haven't come up with them for 40 years, it's been just basically an open season for raping the reef. Now, what's ironic is that those fishers that have permits, many of them are supporting this bill. And the reason why is because they know it's not sustainable. And so they still get to finish and they can maybe phase it out and, and have time enough to change what they do. 
Um, so they support this bill too. And the lawmakers almost unanimously support it. And the last and most important feature is that it's the only environmental bill that, serious environmental bill that we even got passed. The lawmakers passed this nearly unanimously. And so I seriously do not believe the governor should veto this bill. And I want to ask everyone to call him and, and tell him, tell him what's in your heart and communicate and say, hey, governor, you know, because what we need to realize is that people come to Hawaii um, because it's special. And it's special because we have these rare and um, beautiful oceans and birds and fish and uh, ocean life. And so um, we just need him to not veto this bill, really. And I just want to say that we have to start thinking in terms like this. I'm not promoting tourism, but what I am saying is that tourism does feed Hawaii and it feeds it because we are unique. Not because I can just go to any other you know, place on the planet. Um, it's because we are unique. But if we keep taking from our oceans and destroying our oceans, we don't have anything to offer anyone, including ourselves. So these things are public resources that belong to the public and they don't belong to the agency. And while I understand the governor's idea that he should yield to the agency because they're the experts in this case, they're actually not showing their expertise. They're being advocates against the public and the people and the public's resources. And that's where we have to draw the line and say, you're not, you're not allowed to be the advocate against the people and against our resources. So everyone call the governor, okay? And keep being strong. Aloha aina. Aloha.